This then was Rommel. Erwin Johannes Eugen Rommel, commander in chief of the enemy army and the most celebrated German soldier since World War I. Already a legend in the desert, he was a fox who had chased his hunters back and forth across North Africa about as often as they had chased him. And his tricks and turns had made even the Tommies chuckle, which is scarcely the proper reflex to the enemy in time of war. In Have you been by, Oh, Very well, I suppose. Did you see Frau Rommel? Yes, she came and stayed a week at the submarine. She and Manfred. Well, I hope. How does that stay? Oh, they simply got too much for us. Too much of everything. If they keep this up much longer, I've no idea how we're going to get out of it. Not with the amount of petrol we've got, anyway. Well, we've got petrol. Some, you? but not enough. You mean it's still on the way? Neither on the way, nor any prospect of it. Who told you that? I've talked to Rome three times in the past two days. There's no petrol on the way, nor any committed to us, as of 10 o'clock last night. Schultz. Oh, dear. What about the tanks? Did they come? None. None since I left? No. None since August. What about the guns? The neighbor guns? Nothing, I tell you. And no petrol at all? Not a pint. This is correct from the hour. Give me a stool, will you? Here's where it's worst. The 15th in a bad way, barely hanging together. They drove everything What's this? The Trenta Division, they came in here. Yes, I see now. How far is this armor? No further. They're doing pretty well. Where are my maps? Bring the 21st and Arietti north through here. Move the 90th and Trento forward here. So they will come. That's right. Now tell me this. Is Montgomery sending his infantry in first again? Naturally. And then the armor? That's right. Then let's give him a surprise. Let's send our tanks in first and blow a hole through that infantry. If it works, we'll be on top of his tanks before he knows what hit him. With our infantry pouring in to polish it off. Very good, sir. If it doesn't work, we'll know better than to try it the next time. Come on, Altinger. You're not going up now, are you? Don't you think you ought to turn in for an hour so far? After three weeks of being turned in... Where away, sir? Let's head north and go in with the 21st. Appalling, wasn't it? I can't even see why it's called a wall. The big ports like Havre and Ostend and Cherbourg are protected well enough, but the enemy's not coming in on the Queen Mary. Nothing at all has been done about the beaches. Why, I saw 50 places where an army of children could come ashore. The trouble is labor. They have the plans for fortifications the devil himself couldn't breach. Solid steel and concrete from Denmark to Spain. I'm afraid our French friends aren't being as cooperative as they might be. Even when driven to the job, they move like snails. Either we break it up while they're still waiting ashore, or we're in trouble. Is that the way you'd meet it? Stop them on the beaches. Crowd the water with mines and traps and tricks and hit them while they're busy trying to keep themselves from drowning. Here. Down here. And here. I don't agree with you. But the difference of opinion will probably remain academic. As it happens, neither you nor I will determine the tactics in this operation. Not above the regimental level, anyway. You mean Berlin? I mean the Bohemian Corporal himself is assuming sole and total command of this operation. I don't want to get mixed up in this thing. What they do in Berlin is their business, not mine. I'm a soldier, not a politician. You still think you're perfectly safe? Who knows who's safe and who's not in a situation like this? I'm a sane man, you'd know. That's a lot of rubbish. And you'll know it. Well, I hope you're right. And perhaps you are. After all, you are his favorite, and I can think of no one who's ever questioned the deep and enduring gratitude that he's always shown to those who've served him well. No one's in any danger here who does his job properly. Well, then, of course, you have nothing to fear. And if something did happen unpredictably, you'd still have the comfort of knowing that the lives of Lucy and Manfred would be safe and snug in the soft, gentle, tender hands of that brave little band of patriots he's gathered around him. I'm afraid that kind of talk doesn't amuse me. I'm not trying to amuse you. I merely reflect on your extraordinary good fortune. 
I wish you'd think about that too, Sundar. Not the blood on his mouth, but what a godsend he is to you personally. Not only in your home, but in the field as a soldier. How many other generals can boast the favor and support of a leader so gifted in the arts of war? That's enough, Strollin. Surely you haven't forgotten how brilliantly he refused to be seduced into an invasion of undefended England right after Dunkirk? Or how brave he was at Stalingrad when Von Paulus wanted to withdraw from the trap? What other man on earth would have had the courage to send that brief, simple, thrilling command? Don't retreat so much as a millimeter, victory or death. Would Napoleon himself have dared? That's enough, I tell you. Afraid even to think about it. Stop talking to me as if I were a child and you were schoolmaster. Don't you think I know what you mean? But what of it? Who asked me for my opinion? And suppose I told them what I thought, that what they're doing beyond every other consideration is stupid to the point of imbecility. Who do you think would listen to me? Have you ever tried? Of course. I've been told to mind my own business. And who's to say they're not right? Surely you are naive enough to think that a soldier must approve of every detail of his government before he can fight for it? What army could exist like that with every man in it free to decide what he will or won't do? The truth is that a soldier has but one function in life, one lone excuse for existence, and that is to carry out the order of his superiors. The rest, including government, is politics. And if I must remind you again, I'm a soldier, not a politician. What the government does... Oh, stop hiding behind that bloody uniform of yours. An extremely difficult duty, my Führer. But circumstances leave me with no choice. We reached a crisis on this front that calls for a decision on the very highest level. But you've said that. You've said that before. And every time I talk to you, we're facing another crisis. When the enemy has overwhelming superiority on land, at sea, and in the air, and continues to grow stronger with every hour, while we grow weaker at the same rate, that to me is a crisis by any standard that I understand. A crisis that should be examined promptly and realistically. That's you. That's you, like always. When everything's going well, you're willing enough. But at the first sign of a difficulty, you become a defeatist, complete defeatist. Are you perhaps interested why you didn't succeed von Rundstedt? This is why! It may have been better if I had replaced you altogether. Have you perhaps a little confidence in me? No, it would seem that the Führer has in me. May I continue? And what my v bombs are doing to London, has no one told you? No one? Yes, sir. But why not to the beachheads? Because that's not their purpose. They have not that accuracy. They need a whole city for a target, and they cannot miss. Then why not the embarkation ports? Plymouth, Southampton, Portsmouth. No, 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 no! That's, that's exactly what I mean when I say you're no good at thinking about the battlefield. The British don't care for those villages. It's their London that they love. They don't want to see it destroyed the way I'm going to destroy it. In two more weeks, remember my words, they'll be screaming for surrender. Just wait, you'll see. To continue, sir, the struggle is over on this front. Within these two weeks that you mention, you must be prepared to see the enemy break through our lines and push out into the interior of France. Militarily, the end is already in sight. We have nothing more to throw in. What is it you're proposing? That we surrender? I give you the facts, sir. I only ask that you draw the proper conclusions. Proper to whom? To you!